Welcome to Reaping Mods, guys. Today we are looking at a comprehensive compilation of Mihail's Underworld creations. Mihail's Underworld of Skyrim strives to add depth to the creatures of the Underworld, from vampires to werebeasts. All gameplay here has been recorded on an original Xbox One, but links for all platforms can be found down below in the video description. My load order can be found in the pinned comment below, with links for each platform that those mods are available on as well. If you guys enjoy this video, consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel for more mod showcases like this one. Let's begin by taking a look at the Gargoyle Overhaul. Throughout the various castles, forts, and ruins inhabited by vampires, you can expect to find three new variants of Gargoyle. The Common, Brute, and Sentinel. They can even be found randomly accompanying other vampires and outdoor night events across the map. There are some differences between the three variants in regards to the formation of the head and horns. The brutes and sentinels are the same in shape, differing only in color. Each variant will also have its own skeleton linked separately as well. The common variant has the original skeleton from the vanilla game while the Brutes have longer wingtips and slightly larger heads and bodies. The Sentinel variant now has wings larger at the ends and base, as well as being supported by a much larger back with a more accentuated hump. In addition to a more prominent head, its forearms are longer and its nails sharper. Furthermore, it is the largest among the three. A very problematic fourth type of vanilla gargoyle, boss-like, was not implemented in the final version of the game. This abomination has been rescued from the files of the Dongar DLC and has since had its texture and model issues repaired. It is now implemented as an ancient gargoyle, much larger with color close to that of the common variant, but in a darker hue. Its head is much larger along with its wings horns, and the spikes covering the entire body. The mod author has also added some extra changes to their arms and claws, making them a tad bit bigger. This version is very rare, being found only in specific and remote locations where vampires plot against humanity. Living up to its origin and essence, gargoyles explode into petrified pieces when defeated, leaving behind nothing but a pile of ash. This ash pile won't contain any ore, but it can still be looted for gems, vampire dust, and a petrified gargoyle headpiece. This item has no other use than decoration and can be sold at your pleasure. It is no longer possible to capture the souls of gargoyles, as these are soulless golems, animated by vampiric magic, and killing them kinda leaves them a little... Some vampires now summon gargoyles of all three types, this allows the simplest variants to continue to appear even at higher levels. These vampires drop spell tomes that teach you how to summon gargoyles as well. So now you can conjure gargoyles even if you're not a vampire lord or even a vampire at all. To keep the vampire lord's powers at a higher status, using the amulet of the gargoyle when transformed summons an ancient gargoyle instead of the common variant. In turn, it is possible for the ancient gargoyle you've summoned to summon a common gargoyle of its own to help in combat. The more the merrier, right? Ranking lowest amongst the werebeasts, lesser werewolves are believed to be people of weak mind and body who received the blessing of Hercene and were unable to dominate the form. This resulted in mindless, feral werewolves walking on all fours, unable to return to their human form. There is speculation that they are cursed Silverhand members, since they can be encountered roaming close to Silverhand settlements. Depending on their previous allegiances, many began to wonder if they have been cursed to exist in a lesser werewolf form as punishment from Hercene himself. Most scholars scoff at this inclination and stick to the belief that they are just unfortunate souls, 
unable or unwilling to manage their werewolf transformations. You can expect to find one new respawnable type of werewolf with new sounds and modified behavior. The Magnum Opus of Necromancy. The perfect fusion of life and death. Immortality without the rotting decay. Hovering far above liches or bone masters, the feared necro priests are second only to the powers of bone tyrants and demi liches. They come in four variants with new sounds, dialogue, spells, behavior, and loot, along with four new locations to explore. Wearing highly ornamented robes with arcane inscriptions of black magic and armored in sturdy ebony, these necro priests often choose remote ruins as their bases throughout Nern. They then proceed to surround themselves with countless skeletons, which they resurrect at their own pleasure. And yes, I mean it when I say countless skeletons, so stealth archers, beware. The magic they wield is beyond powerful, and involves the conversion of soul energy into electricity. They will quickly drain your magicka, and may resort to using their electrical energy, which is also able to drain your magicka, and cause considerable physical damage. Aside from their destructive power, Necro priests can create powerful deflective barriers, as well as control Daedra and the undead, turning them against their masters, or even expelling them back to oblivion. Vampire beasts are commonly considered lesser vampires, but this description can be deceiving. For lesser does not mean weak and stupid. True, they are primitive and bear a closer relation to animals than to humans, but when they drop on their prey from above, they can be just as dangerous as their noble cousins. Most types of vampire beasts were not turned into vampires, but were born in the deep caves of Cold Harbor, ready to serve their prince, Molag Ball. Expect to find seven new variants of vampire beast all of which have new sounds, loot, spells, and effects. Let's begin with the Garkins. These monstrosities belong to a class of particularly dangerous vampires, whose strength exceeds even that of trolls and ogres. From the City Guard reports describing the attacks committed in Morthal years ago by three Garkins, later killed by a certain strange Red Guard mage known as Falion, it would seem as though these horrible monsters do not content themselves with drinking the blood of their victims. The investigators concluded from the blood and guts strewn about the crime scenes that these Garkins tear their victims to shreds with great delight, mucking about in their bloody entrails. These Garkins are tall and large, but unable to run very fast. During combat, they usually try to incapacitate their prey using blasts of energy created by their large eardrum sacs. Their claws are also known to be coated in a weak poison. They often gather members of other subspecies of lesser vampires around themselves in order to act as leaders of their newly formed pack. These pack leaders are known as Alpha Garkins. They use rudimentary clothing to represent their elevated status and are much bigger, much more powerful than a regular Garkin. Their skin is greener and carries with it a light glow, especially around the eardrum sacs. They have spikes growing alongside their bodies, especially along their backs. So tread lightly around these monstrosities. Fledgers, unmistakable for any other creature, with the exception of werebats. These creatures feature wide, toothy jaws, 
flat, bat-like faces, and completely hairless, often warty, blue bodies. These vampires mainly fight with their teeth and claws, flailing about blindly and not stopping even when their victim is already dead. Even a solitary fledger is strong enough to take down a trained soldier. When compared to other vampires, fledgers display meager intelligence, seen most clearly in the mindless rage, which causes them to try with all their might to attack and tear to shreds any weaker being. When fighting fledgers, it is best to take advantage of their particular method of movement. These creatures do not run or sprint, but instead they try to use their sonar in order to disarm their victims. Knowing this behavior, one can plan the fight appropriately and not let oneself be caught by a surprise. Proto-fledgers, a unique form of fledger that only exists in the unusual caves of the Forgotten Valley, alongside the equally rare Vampire Falmer. They emit a red glow from their bodies and are usually covered in blood. Proto-fledgers are relatives of fledgers, coming from the deepest, darkest caves of Cold Heart. Members of this species are characterized by their considerable strength, as well as the strange glow they emit, a trait most likely tied to their cave-dwelling nature. As proto-fledgers have never had significant contact with the outside world, having spent their entire time in the deep caves of the Forgotten Valley, whose atmosphere is much more similar to that of their homeworld's deepest dungeons. The Catacan. In natural form, catacans have many bat-like traits, but are the only type in this list that shouldn't really be considered a lesser vampire. Catacan are actually a transformation that the vampire blood can cause in some individuals who dive more deeply into their more bestial side, foregoing rational interests in order to focus on fulfilling their more primal desires. Despite their transformation, they maintain their intelligence and capacity to speak. Some of them are also capable of disguising themselves using some sort of illusion or alteration magic and acting as normal humans. They are, however, somehow wilder and more savage than the rest of the intelligent vampire beasts. Many of them like to wear shiny objects collected and woven into their fur. In combat, they use invisibility to ambush their prey and are also able to command swarms of bats. They are known as great users of blood magic, knowing lots of draining spells. Magic aside, they also have long claws which continue to grow throughout their lifespan, posing a great threat when up close. Really old catechin, known as elder catechin, are bigger and stronger than their younger versions. They also have longer, darker beards and more pallid skin. And since the transformed vampire is in that form for a very long time, he has mastered all the abilities it has to offer. The Ekimara. If a not so powerful vampire dives deep into the same bestial side of vampirism, but doesn't have a strong enough mind to handle it properly, they end up losing their minds and the ability to speak. Eventually, they start acting and thinking as regular vampire beasts. They are smaller than a catechin, and despite fighting similarly, they have less power and use a lesser number of drain abilities. Their look is similar, but they have much less fur, especially in their beard, and their colors are much brighter they don't use jewelry, and their head horns are much smaller. Let's expand the concept, importance, and presence of the vampire lords throughout Skyrim, making vampires much more relevant than ever before, and amongst the most powerful groups lurking in Skyrim's darkest corners. Only the highest ranking vampires will have this type of blood reform usually those in charge of vampire lairs. They will remain in human form, 
only revealing their more bestial nature when they become close to destruction. Once provoked, they will summon vampire beasts to come protect them and keep their enemies at a distance so they can use their drain spells to weaken their prey. Vampire lords and mistresses are the most common variants. You can expect them to summon Garkins into battle, and if you look closely, you will notice that their summons are collared. Vampire kings and queens, larger variants with elongated wings and gray rune skin, wear royal armor with the males sporting a long cape. Both of them will summon colored fledgers to defend them in battle. Despite all this knowledge, not all vampire kings can be found utilizing this form. Harkin, for example, being one of the most powerful vampire kings around, still dons the royal armor and cape. However, he retains a form similar to regular vampire lords, instead of vampire kings. The reason for this is unknown, but hypothesized to be an appearance that is fully optional for a vampire lord to partake in. Strange, even amongst other vampire lords, the skeletal vampire lord lurks deep in the shadows of Skyrim's forgotten dungeons. But it's unknown why they use their reanimated bones rather than traveling to Cold Harbor and reconstructing a new body for themselves. Whatever their reasons, their haunting appearances only aid in causing madness in those unlucky enough to stumble into one of their lairs. These harrowing skeletons will raise ghostly vampire lords to aid them in combat, and are formidable foes. Werebears are creatures added by the Dragonborn expansion. Were creatures that, while similar to werewolves, transform into bear-inspired abominations rather than wolves. They are bigger, heavier, and overall much more powerful. Due to their similar origins and lore, they reuse werewolf animations and sounds. Now the animation part is understandable, but the sounds completely break the immersion. So this mod aims to fix that. Let's look at what this mod brings to the werebears you will run into throughout your adventures. The werebear's breathing sounds are now kept in a looping idle, as it is the only custom sound that the werebears have in the vanilla game. Werebears now have the ability to emit a powerful roar of dominance, which can shake the stability of some enemies for seconds at a time. Four combat roars can be emitted by werebears during your battles. Four new sounds are emitted randomly while werebears are injured, and two new sounds for when a werebear dies. Werebears now have new footstep sounds instead of the light footsteps of the werewolves. Now their footsteps are heavy and intimidating in order to match their appearance. The noise emitted by the claws of the werewolves is no longer used in their attacks either. Instead, they now have a much louder and heavier sound for each swing. A bug that sometimes caused werebears to speak in a Nord voice while they are transformed has also reportedly been fixed. Alright guys, that wraps up this showcase of Mihail's Underworld of Skyrim. You can find links for it down below in the video description, along with that like and subscribe button where you can help support more mod showcases like this one. Thanks for watching guys, and I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below about the mod, and I hope to see you guys next time on Reaping Mods.